Welcome back to Who Shows. So this is probably, you know, anyone running an NFT system's worst nightmare, a blackout. So I just had solar installed because solar. And um, we've got no energy because I actually came home, flicked the switch and everything went out. But it's not just my house, it's the whole street. Whether it was actually me, probably was. Not even my solar system can save me now. Uh, it literally turns off once it senses there's no power to the grid. Hang on. Have a look at that. It says no grid power, but there's power coming in, but there's no grid power. Anyway, so you've actually seen that I've set this up as off-grid before. But because I've got so many different pumps running off uh, the one electrical box, it was just easy for me to put it back onto the grid. So this isn't an absolute catastrophe. Uh, if I want, I can run the pumps that matter, like uh, the NFT pump in the background and this NFT um, off 12 volt. I can just bring the battery out and start running it. But I'm hoping that I won't have to do that. So in the meantime, all I'm doing is filling up a five liter container and every so often taking one of the pucks out and then just running water down through the NFT system. Oh, sorry, nutrient solution. Um, and five liters should be enough just to keep the roots moist until such time as hopefully the power comes on. Uh, and I'm just hoping that this buys me enough time. <laughs> luckily, it's not summer and it's not the middle of the day. So luckily for me... The grow bed actually turned off on a half cycle. So uh, that will still have enough nutrient solution in it and it'll just act as crack key until such time as uh, the pumps turn back on. Uh, and the worst that will happen is some oxygen depletion within that system. The thing that really worries me is what would happen if there was, you know, some kind of unscheduled line maintenance or, you know, God forbid, the energy company doesn't let you know they're turning the power off for like six hours in the middle of like a hot summer day, which I've known to happen before, would I lose all of my vegetables? This is a real worry. <laughs> and if you share my concern... Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> so before I go and water this one, I'll show you how dry the roots are. If this blackout continues though, I'm gonna actually have to, you know, connect up the 12 volt batteries and solar system uh, for tomorrow, just in case I don't have time for work. So I guess while you're here, we can go on a bit of a garden tour. Uh, sorry about the shaky camera, my gimbal is dead. Anyway, um, so up the front, we have some radicchio. So radicchio, radicchio, radicchio. Anyway, at the back, you've got, uh, I'm pretty sure they're the red climbing beans. No, they definitely are the red climbing beans. I've added in some Roma tomatoes and some of the the green and red tomatoes that I have no idea, they were heirloom tomato, I'm pretty sure. Um, in the back here, 
you'll see some uh, iceberg lettuce, uh, which I've added because, you know, it's winter and uh, I love iceberg lettuce. In fact, I don't think it's iceberg lettuce. I think it's cos lettuce. I'm pretty sure it's cos lettuce. Anyway, um, I've got some random basils here um, because I always end up with too much basil. So I just decided to plant a couple of random ones. Uh, over here, I've got some eggplant and there's um, some eggplant over in the corner there and pretty much scattered along with the beans, I've got some eggplant in the system. Um, it's doing really well considering we're in the middle of winter, but winter in Australia is not really winter. I've also got some random like peas uh, that came out of the extra peas that I had for my wardrobe grow. And my wardrobe grow, because it got too large, is now over here. Um, I've actually just got a pump running from the main reservoir down in here and it runs up underneath um, into this like makeshift pallet bench that I've got um, and it just feeds into the grow bed and then the grow bed drains back out and through this pipe here and back into the res which is um, pretty gross at the moment um, but you know all of the numbers are stable in the bed, I've actually got uh, some uh, more eggplant and tomatoes, um, and I've kept some of the zucchinis that are in here because they've been producing really nicely. Like, they just keep giving me fruit, uh, which I'm really happy about. So this is the pumpkin NFT system, and uh, I actually found out that one of the things I put in there wasn't a pumpkin. It was... Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it was a cucumber and uh, I replaced it because I've got enough cucumbers. And this is uh, this is a watermelon. So there's another watermelon over in the corner and there were actually some over in the NFT behind us uh, and that I added in. Now I get these, these um, pumpkin vines to wrap down this uh, trellising uh, that I've made. Uh, on the back and they should just cascade down and fill up my whole yard hopefully anyway um, this has actually been really stable they haven't been using much water but they are still pretty small at the moment but look at the green on them I mean that is a nice colored green so as you can see the NFT is coming along really nicely right now um, the wall of bean is looking extremely green and I'd be really unhappy if this were like a four day blackout and anyway, I, it's beside the point. I can fix it. I've got the tools. I just don't want to have to do it, but I'm lucky that I've set up my backup plan. So this video is kind of like a watch out for this scenario and maybe have a backup plan in place uh, because I'd be really freaking out right now if I didn't have that off-grid system almost, you know, ready to go. Thanks for watching this episode of Who Chose. I'll see you next time. And that, that is the Energex truck. So it wasn't just me. <laughs>